Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, I greet you. I welcome you to this service of worship. We gather here at St. James and through our online service to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ and that he is risen. For those who are present in the building, please be seated. This time I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, printed in our order of service in the announcements. A warm welcome to all who are gathered with us in the building and those who are joining us through our online service as we gather to celebrate this Easter Sunday. I, I want to extend my thanks to everyone who helped with our Lent and our Easter services. Had a good turnout for the sunrise uh, and a wonderful breakfast afterward. And thanks to everyone who's contributed their gifts to making that possible. Thanks for the special music this morning uh, from our guest and from our, our choir. Uh, all gifts blend together in a wonderful way. Uh, for those who are looking for them, the latest issue of Connections is available here in the building. It's also available on the website in PDF form. Thanks to all the contributors uh, and those who make that possible. Uh, as well, in your order of service this morning and, and the online bulletin is uh, an insert around Earth Day, which I certainly would draw to your attention and action as appropriate. I'll mention as well that there are some Earth Day activities happening uh, at the Antigonish Public Library from 2.30 till 4 uh, this coming Earth Day, which is Friday. Uh, if you're interested, please do check it out. The other announcements and notices uh, are found in your order of service, as well as the mention to the uh, online course on spirituality, which has been in the bulletin the last few months. I would draw to your attention to the fact that the deadline for that registration is coming up soon. The other announcements are as printed, and I certainly would draw them to your action uh, as appropriate. Why don't we pause for a moment and prepare ourselves for worship? Please join with me in our call to worship. When everything was dark and it seemed the sun would not shine again. God's love is too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. So let us step from the shadows of Good Friday into the light of Easter. Let us pray together. God of new life, Long ago, faithful women shared the news of Jesus' resurrection and allowed the joy of Easter to be known. As we hear their witness, let our voices blend with theirs, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, 
and our faith is true, for together we celebrate what you do for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. The story of Easter from the Gospel of Luke. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them, and the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then the women remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed by what had happened. Let's join our voices together on this Easter with hymn number 155, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. I just read the Easter story, and it's one that we all know and we cherish. But to really hear the Easter story, of course, we have to back up a little bit. And we have to back up to the cross. Because the Easter story really starts at the cross. Well, it starts before then, but I'm going to start at the cross today. As a reminder that Jesus goes to the cross, and the disciples and the followers and all the people who hoped and believed and trusted in Jesus went to the cross and watched. 
And what they saw discouraged them because it didn't seem like a moment of triumph. It seemed at that point that everything was being crumpled up and destroyed because Jesus dies on the cross. And they place Jesus into the tomb. And they roll a stone in front, and then that's that. This morning, early on the third day, the women came to the tomb. And they came into the tomb. And they saw that it was empty. But more importantly, what they saw was that the cross had been transformed. And the message was no longer that life had been ending, but that he was risen and that life was beginning again. For that's the message of Easter, that the cross is transformed and made new because God's love couldn't be contained and won't be contained. So shout out and believe that he is risen and begin to experience and know that for your life. Let's join our hearts together as we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to invite those who are heading off to our children's worship program to do so now. Our responsive reading is Psalm 118, which is found on page uh, 837 on Voices United, and we'll be doing parts one through three. Let Israel now say, Let the house of Aaron say, Let those who fear God say, Alleluia, Alleluia. God is my strength and my song, God has become my salvation. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises me up. I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. Open to me the gates of the temple that I may enter and give thanks to God. I thank you for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. this Easter Sunday from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. 
They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May God bless to us a further understanding of these words and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen. Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women go to the tomb early on Sunday morning. They saw Jesus die on the cross and know he has been hastily buried before the Jewish Sabbath began. So at first light on the third day, they go to the tomb in order to prepare the body of Jesus properly for burial. 
An act of love from the woman who saw the goodness of God in Jesus and witnessed his miracles and ministry. Now, all four of our gospel accounts mention the women come to the tomb early that morning, but honestly, they do as poor a job as Luke at telling us exactly who those women are. Mary Magdalene is mentioned in each gospel, and most tell us that there is another Mary, although they're not quite sure which Mary. But beyond that, we're told the witnesses to the resurrection are the other women. So honestly, who is there to celebrate the first Easter morning is unclear. But what they witnessed is very certain. The stone is rolled away. The barrier placed at the tomb to seal it, to make it permanent, has been moved. Indeed, in some Gospels, the women worry as they head to the tomb about what they're going to do about the stone because they don't have the strength, the ability to move it which makes their arrival to anoint the body of Jesus, to prepare it for the grave, that much more of an action of love and faith. Because they don't know how they're going to do what they know they have to do, but they go to do it anyway. And they discover that the tomb is empty. The body of Jesus is gone. They see the grave closed, the place where the body was laid, and it's empty. And the translation I read this morning said that they, were, they are perplexed. In other words, they're completely confused and have no idea what possibly could have happened. After all, they had seen Jesus laid here just before night fell. They knew the stone had been rolled in front, and they know that they're the first ones to the tomb that morning, which is when the angels appear beside them. I know the reading says that they're men in shining clothes, but let's make no mistake about it, these are angels. The angels show up and terrify the women who bow down before them in fear. After all, the tomb is empty and there's nothing there as they enter, and now two shining men appear. And the Bible tells us the angels are heavenly message who share messages from God, and these angels are no different. They ask the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And they remind them what Jesus had said about being turned over to the authorities, being killed and rising on the third day. And the women remember. They remember and rush to tell the unexpected, wonderful and surprising news of Easter. They tell the closest followers of Jesus who hear their witness, their news, their story and don't believe them. And who can really blame the disciples? It sounds like an idle tale or wishful thinking that the women went early in the morning, the stone was moved, the tomb was empty, and God's messenger said that Jesus is alive. So most of the followers dismiss what they say. And yes, I say most deliberately. Because we're told that Peter goes, well, actually the gospel says Peter runs to see for himself. He rushes to the tomb, and indeed the stone has been rolled away, and the tomb is empty, and the scripture says that Peter is amazed, amazed by what he has heard and what he's seen. For at Easter, the stone has been rolled away. We're not told who rolls the stone away, only that it's no longer for us a barrier to go and see that the way has been opened for us to witness for ourselves the truth of what comes after the crucifixion, to see the act of love which God shows us in Jesus by raising him from death and making the promise of salvation a reality through him. In the resurrection, God makes the words Jesus spoke come alive and have new meaning and impact and truth. For at Easter, we're asked to witness for ourselves that the tomb is empty. That's what the women do. That's what Peter does. They see that Jesus isn't dead. The promise of God isn't over. The hope of salvation isn't finished. So hear the story. That familiar story of what the women discover early that morning, and then open your eyes for yourselves and see that the tomb is empty. 
Because make no mistake about it, with every heart that knows forgiveness, every soul that is given a second chance, every time we open our eyes to face the worst and know that we are not alone, we are there in the empty tomb. Because we don't know why we're forgiven. We don't know why we have a new day. We don't know why there is hope and peace and strength for us, but those things are happening in our lives. They are happening in our lives, and that changes everything. For at Easter, we experience that the impossible can be a reality, that God has not forgotten, abandoned, or ignored us, that there is a way through which leads not to an ending, but to a new beginning. We start perplexed. We're not sure what's happening, but we know that something is taking place. And then the good news that Jesus is alive, that God's salvation is for us, that there is a love which cannot be broken, gets told to us once more, and we dare to believe. And when you believe, when you know, when you trust, you live a new life, a renewed life, with that truth leading you on the way which Jesus makes possible through the cross and the empty tomb. And you share that life with others. Because the good news of Easter of Jesus is given to us with the understanding that we're not to hoard it or hide it, but to share it. Like the sunshine, like the day, like joy itself, it's good news and it's something that we're to spread and shout, to invite and call others to know and see and experience for themselves. And that brings me back to the tomb the women who came to the empty tomb on Easter morning. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who go to the tomb early that day. Because in my life, I've had women and men who I remember and know shared with me the good news of Jesus. They were in my family, were in my church, were my neighbors and friends, and they shared with me what they had heard and believed and trusted. And I could list off some of their names to you this morning. But in all honesty, over the years, there are others who shared their faith with me whose names I have forgotten. Yet even if I don't remember all of their names, I've never forgotten the words they shared, the witness they gave, the impression that they made on my life to go and see, to experience for myself and then to risen, follow the risen Jesus each day. So tell what you hope and what you believe. Share the good news of Easter and your faith. Don't worry if you're believed or if others dismiss you, or even if they remember you in the years to come. Simply follow Jesus and allow your words and actions to shape your life into a witness, a witness to the greatest news ever that Jesus Christ is alive. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in hymn number 179, Hallelujah, Hallelujah.
As we gather this Easter Sunday and hear the good news that the tomb is empty and Christ is alive, as we begin to understand what to do with that in our lives, let's join together in our litany for Easter Sunday. When the women ready to embalm the dead run in joy from the empty tomb with surprising news. When Thomas touches the wounds from the cross and hears the words of Jesus which set him free. When Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? And gives him the chance to change his life. When Jesus walks with two disciples who do not recognize him and breaks bread with them. When Paul is blinded by the light and recognizes that Jesus is calling him. When we build a world where the hungry are fed at the same table as the rich. When we beat swords into plowshares and demand peace fill the earth. When we dare to believe, dare to hope, dare to trust in the power of the risen Christ. It is Easter Day when we welcome the love and grace of God. Amen. Our hymn 173, Thine is the Glory. cherishing and carrying with you that good news that Christ who died is alive again. And as you go, may the grace, may the mercy, and may the peace of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all of your days. Amen.